Hi, wow. Matthew. Hi, Sandrus. Uh, today we will speak about your piece, uh, Sound for Rich People. Uh, it's NFT piece, right? It's an NFT piece, yes. Uh, can you just uh, a little bit uh, give background of the piece, right? Uh, it was somebody commissioned or it was your own idea or your... Um, yeah, sure. Um, it was actually an idea I had for quite a long time. Um, I think it started already back in 2017 when Ethereum launched. Um, I read about Bitcoin and blockchain technology before, but until then, um, Bitcoin for me was only some kind of speculative thing. And I, I like the idea of being a, a, a storage for value that is independent of, of a currency. And um, that is an independent network. There's no central, centrally organized institution behind it. But when Ethereum launched, there was much more to it um, because they had this feature of smart contracts, um, which I thought this is a really interesting for digital rights, rights management so that you could connect different conditions to, to a token. And I followed uh, Ethereum and the, the development of blockchain and smart contracts for quite a long time. And um, then I also saw how NFTs got a thing in arts and digital rights management. And um, at first it was clear that it's something for visual arts um, and the traditional contemporary art market where artworks are also kind of a, a storage for value. Um, and it was not really about um, the rights of the artist, um, but that came up quite quickly when, when the um, broadly accessible NFT platforms launched like Rarible or OpenSea. Mm -hmm. And I had this idea of um, creating an NFT in, um, in the field of sound art. I had it for quite a long time, but I just found the means to do that in the right way quite recently when these platforms came up like Rarible. Yes, and uh, what, <clears throat> what is the central message of the piece, right? Um, I think what's interesting for me is that um, that it follows um, the rules of the art market. Like you can see that um, authorship um, and the token connected to the authorship is um, is almost completely an economic category, not an artistic category. Um, and this was very interesting for me, and um, this is also why the the, um, the content itself is actually totally irrelevant. It's only about the token itself because it's a storage of value for people that can pay these amount of money, um, and that was the interesting thing for me. And there's a reference I wrote it in the NFT to um, this app. That, uh, that launched for the iPhone a couple of years ago, the I Am Rich app, also by, by, by a German programmer. And the app itself does nothing. It contains nothing. There's no functionality. It's just this red gem. And when you press it, it says, I am rich. <laughs> and the app cost $1,000, that was the maximum, or $999, that was the, the, the maximum price you could set in the app store. And I somehow thought this is uh, this is not only a joke. This is a conceptual art piece, um, and I wanted someone to pick up this idea and and turn it into um, in, into this conceptual work uh, that my NFT was supposed to be. Got it. Got it. So it's more, let's say, um, less a musical experience, but more a conceptual experience, right? Yes. Totally. Yeah. But it's very connected because um, it's white noise. Yes. Um, but it's it's not any white noise. I could have generated it. It's 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 kind of a unique white noise because it was generated by uh, by a unique synthesizer here at the um, Akademie der Künste in Berlin, in the electronic studio. It's an analog white noise, so it's really unique. It's not a not seeded by by digital random generator. And. Um, the, the idea for that, like to take something that is um, that is unique in a way, but also not unique because white noise is yeah, the most common thing you can, you can produce in the sound world. 
Um, I, I stumbled upon that when I um, when I read somewhere about the uh, about the market for luxury watches. Mm -hmm. um, they're also uh, a storage for value. Actually, a lot of people don't know this, but um, really expensive watches they don't lose value. Um, the material value itself is also it's not really high. I mean, the steel steel watches like Rolex steel watches or Patek Philippe steel watches they cost a huge amount of money. They're super super expensive. But um, the producing costs or the material costs, they're, they're in, in, there's absolutely no relationship between that. It's just the, the branding and that there's, an, uh, there's a broad understanding that these watches are a, a storage of value. Um, and this kind of product, like because they claim are this very unique and it's handmade and it's you know Geneva, it's Swiss watches, this kind of branding, um, I took that for the white noise I produced because the white noise itself, it's, it's not that special, but the way it was produced, you know, like it's, it's a little bit like the audio file scene where the golden cables and, and uh, membranes made out of flax and, you know, it's, it's really special and um, high class. That was somehow the, the idea behind it. Sorry. Yes. Uh, just the uh, high class uh, white noise. High class white, uh, luxury white noise. And why? <laughs> that was the idea behind. Yes, and how you choose the title of the piece? How uh, you because you have sound for each people, right? Yeah. How you how you came up to this title? Um, actually, it was a refer. Uh, this was the reference to to the I am rich app. So yeah, it was quite simple. I didn't want to choose a a fancy name or a somehow metaphoric title, but just plain in your face, it's a sound for rich people and, and nothing else. Yes, yes. And um, <clears throat> what kind of software uh, you use, right? Um, for creations is, is file. And how everything, right? From the beginning, okay, you have idea, right? And how, mm -hmm. how it's... Well, yeah, there, were, there were a lot of, of, of different ideas. Um, first, I thought about um, the, the problem of the reproducing this thing, because yes, yeah, it's, it's a unique analog white noise, but as soon as I digitalize it, it's not that unique anymore. Um, and how do I deal with reduction of quality? Do I put the WAF file on Rarible? Do I put the reduced form like I did now, to the MP3 on Rarible? What duration do I take? And then I came to the conclusion that um, it's in the end, it's an NFT you can only buy once. So it's, it's not a multiple NFT. You cannot have multiple editions, but it's a one-time thing. And so, so the, the buyer gets actually the analog version of the white noise, we'll get an LP where the analog white noise is uh, put on the LP in an analog way. So they can listen to it in an analog, completely analog way. But still there's this high quality uh, digitalized white noise. It's recorded in 192 kilohertz and 24 bit. So um, highest quality uh, possible with an RME equipment. And um, <clears throat> the duration is 27 minutes because that's the duration that will fit on one side of an LP. So that you, you get the complete um, space on an LP. It's normally between um, 20, 25 minutes. It's depending actually on, on the dynamic range uh, of the audio file. And white noise, there's not very much dynamics going on. So you can put it to the 27 minutes. Sometimes you have LPs that extend to 30 minutes, but that's a reduction of quality. So the 27 minutes, kind of the of the sweet spot in terms of duration mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, in which platform you created the token uh, on rarible actually um, i wanted to do it uh, a couple of months ago already but um, it turned out that the minting costs were super high at the time so um I think when I wanted to do it, the minting costs would have been about $600 because the Ethereum price was really high with high gas fees um, because also electricity or energy prices um, were high. And then Rarible um, added this option that the minting fee would be paid by the buyer or by the, uh, yeah. 
And um, at that moment, I could create the NFT. I mean, it's, it's not minted, so it's not on the blockchain, but it's on the platform. And as soon as somebody buys it, it, it will be minted and um, then it will be really um, fixed in the blockchain. And the high cost, actually, that, um, that was uh, something that put me off a couple of months ago when I actually wanted to do it. And I think this, is, uh, this was also a problem for a lot of artists that wanted to create NFTs, that the minting fees were just really high. Mm -hmm. And uh, on this, um, it will be like, the token will be issued on Ethereum blockchain, right? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> as I understand, it's more very conceptual one, right? It's very conceptual piece uh, with uh, like all idea is about... Uh, that you tokenize some unique noise, but basically this is more like a piece where people can trade uh, trade that's that white noise, right? That is more about that. It's like more like social critique of 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 relationship of like economical relationship of art, right? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would put that. Yeah, I wanted to put that in a work like this. Um, the fact that it's not about the art itself when 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 it's an an object you can buy and you can trade because at that moment the the content isn't that important that moment is just a um a value storage um and on the value you agree by uh, a critical mass so a crit there has to be reached a critical mass of people that agree on the certain value and that moment the content of the storage itself is totally irrelevant and that's something that has been criticized uh, a lot of times uh, within the traditional art market. Um, for example, this, this famous um, Banksy piece where the picture got shredded during the auction and that did not reduce the value of the artwork. It did in fact rise the value. So <laughs> this, was, this is the similar direction, I would think. Um, and what is interesting for me uh, beyond this critique is, um, is the fact that there's um, obviously a, a loss of trust in traditional currencies because they're inflationary. In the European Central Bank, the Fed, etc., all, all the central banks, they're pumping a lot of money into the system. And um, we can see the effects now by rising inflation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, also already after the... Um, after uh, the financial crisis in 2008, um, you could observe that investors were, look, were looking for, for um, um, also different kind of um, storages for their money, like housing market, um, real estate. And um, that this kind of um, loss in, in trust in traditional currencies, um, this also um, fueled the rise of um, of uh, cryptocurrencies and of course the, the the way people were using cryptocurrencies for example in countries where there's very high inflation where there's complete loss of trust in, in the traditional currency people are switching to bitcoin or to ethereum or dogecoin or whatever because they trust these kind of currencies more and this idea of um uh, what what kind of currency or what kind of concept do you need to keep a society running. So this idea of um, value storage and how you conceive them, how you build them also in, in a digital way. Um, this is something that is really a lot of potential. And um, this is still, uh, there's still a lot to discover, I think, in, in every area um, of, or in every, in, in every category of, of our daily lives. I mean, starting from international transfer of money to uh, data exchange to uh, currencies, whatever, there's, there's to digital rights management. So there's really a lot of effects on every, um, in every aspect of life that will be changed by um, block blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology, I think. Yes, yes. Um, and was the last question. Um, for our uh, short interview would be you um, you are one of the first right composers who created nft pieces and what would be your, your the key learnings right the key learnings what you learn from this process 
which would be some some something that you want to say to other composers who would who would try to as well to engage with this uh, technology. Mm -hmm. um, what I can see is that it's still it's it's still not a thing for for um, sound art. Somehow, it's still um, ninety nine percent of the NFTs are visual art. I think and this is something that's making me really curious because also sound or sound artwork is not that trade not tradable in a way that visual art is i think it's because it's also time based that's somehow um somehow special so the the content is actually more important than in visual nfts because you've got the time aspect mm -hmm. and the time aspect is something that you can not easily change so much i could imagine that we will see um when we follow the development of, of sound art nfts that we will see a new format coming up something like acoustical memes i think so very very short pieces very, very short fragments of sound that um that are the content of an nft i could imagine that something like that will be coming up and as the accessibility of the platforms is is gaining uh, is is gaining a lot, and it is easy for people to start and make NFTs. Um, there will also be it will be inflationary in a way. Um, so it's nothing special anymore at, at a certain point to make an NFT. I don't know how that will. Um, uh, what effect that will actually have on on NFT market or NFT platforms, or the way how we how, how we think about it and how we um, how we deal with it uh, in our daily life. But um, it's always interesting to see how technolo technology and technological development creates new formats of art, and this is something we will see quite soon, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It's very interesting to talk about <laughs> NFTs and this technology. It's uh, yeah.